Good morning, everybody, and thank you for your patience as we give you an update on the status of Safe Harbor this year. I want to thank Reverend Alex and also the Sunday Services Committee for this opportunity. I'm going to see if I can do a quick screen share here. and give you an update. Everybody seeing my screen? Excellent. So Safe Harbor this year, for those who don't know, is a seasonal shelter, which is now operating on a fixed schedule. It's operating from November 1st, through April 30th. This is different from prior years where the start date was variable as well as the end date. The doors open at 6 p.m. and guests are provided with food, a safe warm place to sleep, and also this year breakfast, a hot breakfast, will be provided by Central United Methodist Church. Last year, we had a day facility open as well. Timing was variable, but because of COVID and a lack of other support services throughout Traverse City, there's, there was essentially no place else for the homeless to go once they were discharged from Safe Harbor. Giving you a brief history, the original concept of Safe Harbor began in 2003 when the Church of the Nazarene opened its doors to the homeless in wintertime. They thought they'd stay open for about a week, but they ended up staying open for greater than 40 days. In the years subsequent to that, an association grew of congregations that opened their doors on a weekly basis to the homeless where they were housed in the places of worship. The doors over at the fixed facility on Wellington Street opened in 2017. There were, uh, let's just say that 2020 was a perfect storm for the homeless in this town. Normally available warming shelters, such as the Library, Jubilee House, Central United Methodist Church, were all closed due to COVID. So the only option for the homeless was Safe Harbor. Incredibly, there are almost 6,400 total visits to the shelter, including both the day shelter and the overnight shelter, from just November of 2020 to April of this year. And Safe Harbor provided uninterrupted shelter for 242 overnight guests. Because of the pandemic, protocols were developed, including verbal screening, temperature checks, sequestration of guests who evidenced signs of or symptoms of COVID, and rapid nasal swabs and PCRs were offered by the Grand Traverse Health Clinic. Both Moderna vaccines and J&J &J vaccines were offered to the guests as well. And eating in shifts was instituted for reasons of social distancing. Remarkably, in all these visits, there were only two guests who tested positive for COVID. No outbreaks occurred during the season, and most of the guests did receive vaccination. This year, we're going to have a greater need for volunteers because of a shift away from Goodwill staff to actual Safe Harbor staff for the day-to-day -day administrative responsibilities at the shelter. A new full-time volunteer manager and operations manager, Brad Gerlach has been hired, and Amy Palmatier, who has been down at the shelter for years, will uh, work part-time with guest relations and trauma-informed training of volunteers. We'll need dinner teams, evening hosts, who will be provided with extra training, morning hosts, 
but dinner leaders uh, are going to be primary. And there will also be an option for those who want to do overnights as well, but we are not responsible for supplying overnight volunteers. So from the volunteer viewpoint, what is Safe Harbor? It's a place for us as volunteers to find our best selves in the company of our guests. We discover how much we really have in common with the homeless population who are dramatically underserved in this community. We really get to learn what our guests face regarding healthcare, employment, and affordable housing. And as has been the topics uh, of the sermons the past couple of weeks, we learn to serve others. So finishing up, we need to get involved. I hope to have a slide like this up on the flash. Don't have to copy this down because we will be sending out emails to everybody who volunteered last year. Uh, we'll be able to donate food uh, online as well. But if you have any questions, you can first explore the Safe Harbor website to get descriptions of shifts. There's also a training calendar with regards to the uh, trauma-informed training and FAQs that you can get answered. Do not hesitate to either email or telephone any of us. We're all willing and able to answer any questions you have. So thank you for your time. And we'll turn this over to uh, Betsy and I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Rich. Um, you can see how much work goes into organizing this. That's uh, a lot of the operational side of it. There is this amazing spiritual component to doing this work. Um, and Rich and Katie and I talk about that all the time. Something I say from the first serve, uh, season that I did was this little note right here, which I know is backwards for all of you, but I've saved this written by a guest, this little piece of paper. And it said, out of the blue, a woman handed it to me, randomly me. Thank you all for great, healthy food and loving service. We were just doing our assignments um, and it took every bit of composure I've ever had not to lose it after I read that. <laughs> And um, she didn't need to give me that. We were there because we wanted to be there. Um, another thing that happened one night was I was doing an overnight. There was an argument between two guests. The Goodwill person was talking to the other person and I could see the other man was just furiously struggling with his emotions, sitting off by himself. And I got to be the rabbit. I walked over and brought him a bottle of water and I smiled and I made eye contact. And then all I did was sit down next to him because I didn't know what to say. And he just needed to fume. And that went on for about 15 minutes. And then the Goodwill person called him over and he looked at me and he said, just thank you so that I didn't have to sit here alone. These are the moments at Safe Harbor that fire me up for every shift I've got and every, you know, Zoom meeting we have and, and all of the talk that goes back and forth about how do we do this service. And I'm so glad that Rev. Alex talked about the difference between service and helping and assisting and fixing, because I'm now going to use the words with our guests. How can I be of service to you if they approach me? So I hope you'll think about uh, joining us again or joining us for the first time. Um, it is one of the best things about being part of this congregation. It's the main thing that drew me in when I first joined the congregation a little more than three years ago. And I have learned a lot about myself and a lot about the goodness of the world. Katie, how about you? Well, I just wanna piggyback on Betsy's story. Um, the first year that I volunteered, there was a young man that came up through the food line, maybe in his 
early 20s, maybe not even that old. And he had obviously had um, some problems getting along with someone. He had some injuries on his face. You could tell he had gotten maybe hit a couple times. And he came up through the line and was so grateful for the meal. He came up and asked if he could have seconds because he said the hot dish that we were serving that evening reminded him of his mother's cooking. And that just touched my heart so much that it was so important to him that the memories of that hot dish, the warm, the warm food brought memories of his mother's cooking. And those are the things like Betsy and Rich have mentioned, those are the things that keep us going back. And so we really welcome any of you or all of you to join us in this service. So thank you.